Sussex Sharks won for the second time in succession to move into the top four of this season's Nat West T20 Blast South Group, sending Middlesex Panthers to their eighth defeat. This one by six wickets with 23 balls remaining at the Brighton and Hovejobs.com county ground. Chris Nash won the toss and decided to bowl, a decision which paid immediate dividends as Joe Denley was yorked by a perfect delivery from Lewis Hatchett, the tenth ball of the match. In the next over, Owen Morgan nicked a rising ball from James Anion behind to leave the Panthers on 15 for two in the third over. That brought in Ryan Higgins, who has looked good in his short career thus far. He tried to get the innings moving in the right direction by hitting both Anion off his second ball and Hatchet off his third to the boundary. The 19-year-old has come into this side showing a lot of confidence. The exuberance of youth again in evidence. The more experienced players were less successful. After 40 runs were struck in the power play, Darwin Milan was bowled through the gate by Will Beer with his first ball of the night. As with the previous rain-ruined evening at Lord's, the pitch was not one to be enjoyed by most of the batsmen. Dan Christian was undone by a ball from Stefan Pilot that didn't get up. Neil Dexter then drove Beer straight to Nash in the covers in the next over before John Simpson gave the leg spinner his third wicket in three overs by missing a turning ball to hear the death rattle, a wicket which left Middlesex on 58 for six in the 11th over. Recovering from such a position in this format is very, very difficult and Higgins wasn't helped when he went after Beer only to knock a flying seagull out of the sky. It was that kind of night for the Panthers and it's been that kind of season for them in this competition really. Ollie Rayner had a lot to do when he came to the wicket, but at least he and his partner were able to carry the total to 85 for six, with five overs of the innings remaining. Higgins had impressed with a runner ball 31, but he was the seventh man to go, defeated by Anion's slower ball, another which didn't bounce as much as the batsman expected. Rayner's latest return to Hove ended when he holed out off Yasser Arafat for 18 in the 17th over at the end of which the Panthers had struggled to 91 for 8. James Harris and Harry Podmore brought up the 100, but then the former nicked Hatchet behind. Before the innings was ended with one ball to spare as Podmore sent a ball from Hatchet out to Rory Hamilton-Brown in the deep, with Hatchet claiming career-best figures of 3 for 23 and Beer 3 for 22, the Panthers were all out for 107. The Sharks didn't manage a boundary off the first nine balls of their reply, but then Nash drove Podmore on the up for a very well-timed maximum to kick-start the innings. It stalled briefly as Luke Wright was LBW to Harris for two, wickets the only way that the Panthers were going to turn this game around. They picked up another in the fifth over with the score on 40, when Harry Fint survived a shout for LBW but was run out by Denley's direct hit from cover. This game wasn't over just yet. Indeed, Sussex had defended a low score when these sides met at Lords in May, but 107 was just a little too low, especially with Nash looking in great form, leading from the front with some cracking shots, which always kept his side well above the required rate. With a little bit of fortune, Nash managed to clear short fine leg to bring up his half-century off his 40th delivery, that being his fourth four to go with his 1-6. He was making sure that there was no way back for a Middlesex side, which had shown some improvement in this competition in recent games. Just 24 were needed of 48 balls when Hamilton Brown drilled a ball from Ravi Patel into the hands of Christian after making 17, but it was all too little too late for the visitors. Nash made sure of that by sending this delivery from Patel over the ropes for his second six, just four balls after Hamilton Brown was dismissed. Net run rate may be important when it comes to qualifying for the quarter-finals, so Matt Machen tried to get the game over in a hurry. He, though, holed out off Patel after making three. Nash played the one outstanding innings of the night, and he moved on to 66 out of his side's 100, which was brought up in over number 16. The 17th was the last one. To the first ball of it, man of the match Nash drove Harris straight down the ground, for his third six and the Sharks have completed the job rather comfortably to move into the qualifying positions with five games remaining. 
Nash made 74 of 53 balls to earn his side a second successive win after five in a row were lost. Eight points from nine games is enough to keep this competition very much alive for the Sharks ahead of their next game in Bristol next Friday. While Middlesex can probably now start thinking about other things after losing for the eighth time from ten this year. They entertain Glamorgan in Richmond next Thursday.